Face reality, people. Movies are dead. Games are dead. Narrative, dead. Media is nothing but neural trigger response and viral conditioning. Wait, what are you two talking about? All right, so this is Jeremy Johns, a kind of pretty famous movie reviewer on YouTube. He has his top 10 best movies of 2023. He has movies twice in his title, it's weird. Top 10 movies, best movies, 2023. Okay. And if we haven't seen it, we haven't seen it. Like, what are we supposed to do about that? But if we have seen them, and they're ass cheeks, and he gave it a good <laughs> grade, we will let you know. All right, here we go. Here's reviewing the reviewers, number two. Jeremy Johns. The year's coming to an end, and the time has come. That video that it's tells loud. you the movies I enjoyed most this year. That yearly reminder to my viewers and subscribers exactly who it is they watch. <laughs> Have I watched every movie in 2023? Not even close. Do I watch every movie in any given year? Absolutely not. But I do a top 10 list nonetheless because I cannot have and you all think I'm some sort of professional. Yes, there were even a couple movies that came out on Christmas, on Christmas Eve and Christmas. And I was really stressing out about it. I was like, okay, on Christmas Eve, maybe I can dip out early on visiting my brother, then watch a movie and do a video on that and work on Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas, I can dip out on family early and then watch another movie and then work on Christmas. I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, was it, why was that so hard? I'm going to enjoy family time on Christmas Eve. And We're recording Christmas guests, just so you know. Top 10 video that oh. we'll send 2023 packing. Gone. That's the key to true happiness, my friends. Letting things slip through the cracks and learning to be cool with that. Also, these are not reviews of the movies. So yes, to be fair, you're right. He hasn't seen every fucking movie that came out. And I got it. Wonderful. I wasn't going to judge you on that anyways. I'm going to judge you on the ones you've seen. And the ones I've seen, I guess, too. And if there's a movie here that he puts in his top of his list that we haven't seen before, we're probably I'm going to put it on a list to go watch at some point. We'll probably watch one after this, to be honest with you. Here we go. Please, I do have reviews of these movies, all but one, all but number 10. We'll get to that in a second. All right, enough of this build-up bullshit. You know what to expect from my top 10 videos? We've been at this long enough since there are a few things worse than someone who prattles on too much in the build-up of their videos. Let's get to it. My list of my top 10 favorite movies I watched in 2023. Number 10. Number 10's difficult uh. because I found nine movies I was comfortable with being on this top 10 list. The 10th, I couldn't find a movie I really felt was I didn't feel like it was top 10. So whatever, The Abyss re-released number 10. I'm actually not what? talking with this you doesn't, today. This doesn't that count. That was released in 1989 that was re-released in theaters for one showing on one day. Yeah, The Abyss doesn't count. Sorry, bud. Place. Not my first time watching The Abyss. First time watching The Abyss in theaters. As I sat there, I was like, by God, this is better than most movies I watched in 2023. The making of The Abyss is absolutely infamous to say the least, but doesn't change the fact that as I sat there, my old man energy was coming out as I thought, why don't they make them like this anymore? If you haven't seen The Abyss yet, now's the time to do it. It's low key one of Cameron's best. All right, on to the other nine movies, which are actually from 2023. He nine. just chalked his number down, okay. And next up, still, it gave me the man tears, I'm not gonna lie. Still is a documentary like about Michael J. Fox. J. Fox, his life, his A documentary? Career, his Parkinson's, how he's dealt with that. Because we've all heard Do we, stories Should we count about those in J. top Fox, movies? The production of Back to the Future, his life, when he started hiding his Parkinson's, it's a different thing to hear him actually talk about it. He seems like a likable It doesn't count either. To like, find success in that pit of vipers known as Hollywood. Who maintain Okay, so two picks down, number 10 and number 9. One is a movie from the fucking 80s and the other one's a documentary. Should that count on your movie li like whatever, it's his list. Yeah. He does what he does. Means a perseverance and optimism in the it face is what it of is. His disease. It's inspiring. <laughs> Number eight. It's inspiring. And Next number up, eight. Comic book movie fatigue is not a thing because the killer was great. It's actually based on a comic book. A David Fincher. Ooh. We saw this movie, didn't we? It was trash, bro. <laughs> and there was a number of flubs all over the fucking thing. Like, pretty bad <laughs> shit in there. <laughs> like, nonsensical events. Uh, dogs and Z-Quill. Uh, fucking steroid dude <laughs> bro, steroid hate, goonies yeah i hate i forget half the fucking movie bro i don't remember shit but i remember it enough 
it, it's it's on this channel. We re, we reviewed it on YouTube. Or right? it's one of the first movies we fucking reviewed. I was like, in the beginning, it was all it was like a good build up, and I was like, oh, okay, this this is some meticulous fucking you know assassin dude. But all right, they say, you know, he's learning. To, he's learning to unfold and become more. Uh, I guess the word would be more feminine, more chaotic in his expression, his expressions, and what he's doing because you know his heart gets in there. His, his girlfriend that we don't really get to meet <laughs> through the movie, we don't really get to know her or why he cares about her in the first place. They just say it's his girlfriend. Like okay, cool. Uh, and as we were watching it, the script started like. It, like if they told me that the script was was doing that on purpose, where the script got sloppier, along with the character, the assassin getting sloppier, to where it became like a big mess, and you know he became he, he became more human. I think they were trying to say, like, okay, that's better, but it's still not greatness. Now, to be fair to Jeremy Johns, how many great movies did come out like? How many movies are above this movie in 2023 that we've seen? I mean, we've seen some, old, few, we've seen some older well, stuff. Dream scenario. Um, poor whoa, thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let it relax. Because then like, we'll have to like think of some of these movies that are straight up yeah. better, better than uh, you know, Jeremy John's fucking list. So. The killer, it's like depending on what's coming up as his next movies. Yeah. It'll make me think. Here we go. Your film starring Michael. Not a not a great movie at all. An assassin. I mean that just took Is it right better back. than Captain you know, Marvel? Like sure, but is that saying it much? Like a film that's at the beginning of a filmmaker's career. This movie kinda had the vibe of a young up and coming director from so what? the 2000s. The director that would have a. Yeah, but it's David Fincher, isn't it? would be a cult classic. It had that vibe, but from a seasoned director like David Fincher. Long winded way of saying David Fincher has not lost a passion. This does feel like a passion project. David Fincher film release. Why the fuck does that make it good? Yeah. Why the no. fucking fuck would that make a movie good? It looks like an amateur did it. It's like. But it's, <laughs> but it's David Fincher. Right. And guess what? For me, the passion gets lost in the middle of the fucking script. Some of these fight scenes where this dude, <laughs> this dude clearly has Michael Fassbender killed. And he's like, nah, fuck that gun. I'm going to do uh, action sequence wrestling UFC moves. It's like, what the fuck is that? The dog with the Z-Quill, was that passion, jo Jeremy Johns? Was that a passion movie did that for? Or was it a convenient Good night. Convenient thing to put in the middle of the script to fucking to make the storyline move on, to make the plot keep moving forward. <laughs> we had to get him in the house. We couldn't have the dog out there, so you know he took some Zquil and he passed out. <laughs> the dog got the itis and passed out immediately. <laughs> oh, it was a cookout. He was like a cookout. He's literally praising a seasoned director for making something that looks like a beginner. <laughs> he just said that. Oh, how this God. one just kind of snuck onto Netflix. Yeah, why does he love his girl his girlfriend so much? Oh, they don't show us, no one cares. But it was refreshing. Number seven. Yeah, why why did Michael Fassbender kill this random cabbie but lit the fucking billionaire dude at the end who actually had it like was playing a large role in having it all set up to where people went after him and his girlfriend. They were trying to kill him, Michael Fassbender and his girlfriend, the billionaire, whatever money guy who set it like played a large role in setting it all up. He doesn't kill him, but he kills a random cabbie who's like barely, basically nothing to do with it. All he did was give the assassins a a taxi ride because he's a taxi driver. He was a witness, yeah. He was basically. A witness. And so it's like you murder this dude. Stupid. Why was? I was Tilda Swinton Ooh. working with the steroided fucking assassin, the idiot. I was a sophisticated British woman working with this dude. Is that pa is it a passion project? What the fuck is wrong with these people, man? Holy. My bad, dude. Good. No, 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 no. No, just saying what you were saying. Like, holy shit. I can't wait to see number seven. <laughs> yeah. 
Here we go, number seven. Next up, horror movie of the year for me, absolutely. Talk to me. There's a part of me that tried. We have seen this too. Talk to me. That's the Australian shit where they. There's like some sort of hand or something. And they yeah, yeah, get the, possessed. The kids, yeah. the kids are like drinking and shit. Yeah. I didn't think it was the worst hate. horror movie. Yeah, yeah, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. But at the same time, it's it's judged on the scale of horror movies, which is not a great scale to be on, bro. Yeah, it's just the state of affairs for him to put this seven. It's like you were saying, like, yeah, what? How many good movies actually came out? <laughs> but yeah, I still would. You could probably find something else to put above this. Hey, this is actually this is like low key kind of wrecking uh, David Fincher. It's like, yo, think yeah, of a like David like, Fincher film. Better, like, damn, bro, that, this shit's better than the killer, bro. That's yeah, he's he's full of shit. <laughs> he lying, bro. That's low key kind of fucked up. Man. Yeah, he lying, bro. So David Fincher trying to look like an amateur gets passed by someone who's probably actually an amateur, like who's like brand new to like making major motion pictures or something. I don't know. Like this guy get made gone, girl. <laughs> he gets passed <laughs> over. <to> this... <laughs> he gets passed. Like the movie ain't that bad. The movie ain't that bad. You can't say this movie's better than that one. Like, damn, bro. <laughs> he gets passed by, like, let's be honest, a teeny bopper. Teenagers going to the mall to watch the movies. Fucking bopper. horror movie. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. Wow. All right, let's hear him explain. Talk to me. I used to be conscious of the fact that once again, not the worst movie ever. The story, a, a, a decent, movie, decent horror the movie, but itself and the team. It's just like, yeah, put on this list. Is YouTubers yeah, making a horror movie that actually ended up being good. I can't help. But you, YouTubers made this though. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Over David Fincher. David Fincher's wrecked right now. He's... <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. As I said, like probably made by amateur or like first, you know, first time creators and shit he's then he literally says the next one, youtubers made this shit like oh my god like kudos to them for like making a full movie that made that made sense some somewhat but a lot of just kind of tacky horror tropes and shit like that are all rattled throughout it and it's like okay it's fun to watch during halloween season but after that am i gonna ever watch talk to me again no <laughs> fuck no, no. I'm not even gonna play it next Halloween, man. Like I'm, just, no, no, no. I'm I picking, already forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking classics over this shit, like duh, or whatever's brand new. Like, well. all right, Jeremy. The movie was actually good, not just good, but it was great. In October, people were like, "Hey, oh, what's a good great. horror movie?" I'm like, "Talk to me." That's the one. The acting, chills, thrills, creep oh, factor, yeah. all there. It's a refreshing spin <laughs> on something that could have felt cliche, but feels new. It wraps up in a way I felt was... Could have felt cliche, but intriguing. felt what do you want? new. Number six. What do you Next want? Up, well, another monologue about comic book movie fatigue not being a thing because Across the Spider-Verse was also great. These Spider-Verse movies are fantastic. Okay. Have, have you seen that, Anthony? The Spider-Man? No, I, okay. I have not. I have not seen it either. But if I had to guess, it's probably just an average, fun kids movie. But of course, Jeremy Johns. Like, what movies were you watching, man? <laughs> he hasn't named a movie except for Talk to Me. Oh, yeah, and Killer, that's it. Like, what are we? Three non movies in his first five picks. <laughs> like, holy shit. It's also pretty refreshing to see a multiverse movie in a world of a lot of multiverse movies use that multiverse premise in a way that actually serves the plot rather than just being like hey nostalgia bait what can we cram in here it does have cameos for the sake of people being able to be like oh hey i get that reference but it was treated as icing on the cake rather than trying to be the whole cake itself 2023 okay. was That's definitely about the, the year where i was like it. i am officially it up sick and tired of movies that feel like half <clears throat> of an actual movie because it's part one and well part two will come out later i guess this is the only movie on this list <laughs> rebel that moon did that but that just shows it watch rebel moon be number three on his list and shit number five next up killers of the flower moon when i heard martin oh uh, okay. we've seen that one okay uh it's definitely not a bad movie 
It's not a bad movie. You could put it. You could put that where they put uh, the killer. <laughs> Be honest. With you. I think it's better than the killer, but it, it's, I'm playing it's in very that realm, long-winded. Yeah, yeah. Though it's very long-winded, and I don't feel. I didn't feel as much of a like a payoff, like like something, something that reaches outside the movie type shit, which is what I would want if you're in Scorsese fucking caliber, sure. right? Yeah. Like I want a Gangs of New York payoff, you know. I want something like that, but it doesn't make it a bad movie. It just means it was, I think it's like a this was actually a passion project. That's what it looked like. It's actually a passion project yeah. of social. Well done. Yeah, the social issues that Martin Scorsese cares about. And it's like, oh, he made it into a film. Like, I have zero problems with that. And it wasn't a bad movie at all. Like, it's not, to me, not greatness, but this is his passion project. Like, it's something, a topic he cares about. You know, it's not fake passion project. Like, he just named the killer the David Fincher work. Like, he, he named that a passion project. Like, where? Where's the fucking passion at? Like maybe, maybe, but Fincher would have to explain it to me. This I can clearly see. This is like a passion project. Yeah, and I appreciate it. Okay, once again, not the greatest movie at all to me, but you know, it is what it is. He probably this dude probably felt obligated. Like, oh, Scorsese made a film. I'm obligated to put him in the top five. Or whatever. <laughs> Knowing how these dudes move around and shit. Scorsese was doing a film in 2023. I was like. All right, I'm in. When I heard the premise, I was like, This isn't happening in Odyssey, a tragedy. For being, what was it, three and a half hours long? The movie is enormous. Three is the new two. Oh, it drags like a motherfucker in certain spots. Time. This was a movie that had really good time. They're only stopped at a certain point. All right. Yeah. You're like, we're only really halfway through. What the fuck? I fell asleep, bro. I'm done. It's a lot. It's long winded. Very long winded. But once again, I'll appreciate a passion project. Here we go. Management, I felt. It's a masterwork by a master filmmaker. It's one to remember. I wish I had that review on recording. Oh, it's like, it makes me remember my score. Recency bias is absolutely a thing. Another thing you got to be conscious of when making these lists. My answer to the Iron Claw is it absolutely deserves to be on this list. This is What's this? Iron Claw. It's about the wrestling guys, the, like the. Oh, we didn't see that yet. We have not seen. I want to see this. Oh, we found the one, George. <laughs> this is the movie I want to see. I want to see this movie. So I'll just let him spit on about it. A heartfelt story, a heart wrenching story. It's tough to watch, but I don't mind saying it's a necessary watch. The thing I appreciate about movies like this is when they revolve around a sport. But you don't have to be a fan of the sport. Don't wait for wrestling. To the story. Everybody in the movie did a great job. I don't in fact, trust I his words behind it, but props. So yes, the wrestler Jeremy would apply. Allen White, Harris Dickinson, but I don't trust Jeremy, his Stanley fucking take. Stanley Simmons, Billy James, that. as well as Zach Efron, right. Colt McCallney. By the way, this is not to insult Jeremy Johns. Like he's to me just another. He, he doesn't cringe me out like Chris Stuckman does. He does have cringy some cringy takes to me. That are nonsensical, but it's like you're just some guy who got into YouTube early before everyone else. He did movie reviews before everyone else. Yada yada yada. That's my guess. I don't really know that, but that's my guess. He got in. He got in on it early on, and then, like, well, who else do you watch? There's only five fucking movie reviewers on YouTube, <laughs> and then people started following. And now he has a career and all that shit out of it. And it's like, are you that like? Are you giving me the goods when it comes to someone viewing a movie? Are these even your are these your deepest, truest thoughts about a film? Like or is it just all just just fun and gags and shit like that? And I'm like, man, I want someone who like I want a Gordon Ramsay who takes this shit super seriously. If you make a shit meal in front of him, I don't I saw his video where Gordon Ramsay was on like a Korean cooking channel or some shit like that. And he had like a fun little competition. And they, you know, these two, this master chef from fucking Korea and then him, right? And they get judged and all that shit. And, you know, mm -hmm. he's, Ramsey's just having fun with it. But at a certain point, he tries the other guy's food and he's blatantly honest. Like, the smiles go away. And he's like, oh, this is excellent. This is very, very good. But this over here is not that good. Like, he literally starts critiquing it. Like, because like, yeah. that's his, th like, as much as he seems like a hokey dude now, which he probably is, whatever. He still has that thing. He's got his passion for that fucking yeah. Yes, he cannot eat shit. 
and then call it fucking cookies, bro. He can't do that. He had like if it's shit, he'll call it shit. <laughs> but there's no way around it. Like it, this is his life, bro. A, like a major part of his life. And I'm like, I, do I see that from Jeremy Johns? Not really. No, nah. not, not really. He just uh, it seems like just a happy go lucky dude. But uh, all right. So, who I did give props to in my review. Yeah, this one will stick with me for a while. Number three. No, we'll see about Oppenheimer that. had to be on this list when I heard obviously it would have to be on the Nolan's list. making a movie. Up okay, we saw we saw Oppenheimer. Now, is it a bad movie? Fuck no. No. It is definitely not a bad movie at all. But for me personally... Yeah, top three movie of the year, though. Maybe. I don't... I don't me personally, based on some of the shit we've seen, I don't think so. When, when's The Whale? The Whale's 2023, right? Well, uh, The Whale's 2022. I thought it was... Oh, I'm pretty sure. No. Yeah. I thought it was February of 2023. Am I tripping? No, I heard it, I heard about that in Christmas. I heard about the will in Christmas. Oh, that's when we fucking saw it. We saw it in February or something. Yeah, but it, it came out in December or something. Yeah. Fuck. All right. Well, okay. For me personally, if Oppenheimer's here, and let me just get like a, because I didn't do a video of it on YouTube. Just a mini like review thing. Like for me personally, I'm a big Nolan fan. I love many of his projects. Even the earlier like following, like even his, you know, amateur hour fucking filmmakings, indie movies or whatever. Like, I'm a fan of Nolan. And he does great great, 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 great fucking work. He's probably a lot of people probably consider him number one like cinema guys of all time, bro. <laughs> I would definitely call him up there. Yeah, but there's a certain there's in the beginning of this movie Oppenheimer, there was those elements that I always look for in Nolan films that touch on something a bit deeper than just a social social topic, <clears throat> and then he abandoned that, and it went he tried to go straight up historical with the rest of it, and my God did it make it a snooze fest for me. Not saying it's bad, not saying it was bad. I'm just saying like for what I look for. It was missing for me. So I remember the score I gave it. I think I gave this a 7, 8, 7, 9, somewhere in that territory. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's above it's above average film. But the elements that I wanted were not there. And if you're going straight up history, you're never going to actually capture history, bro. <laughs> Which is why, like, we pointed that out with the... the, the uh, we pointed the it out that, like, you compare this movie to Oliver Stone's JFK, it's night and day. Yeah, because Oliver Stone is like he understands that where it's like, it's like I have to fucking um insert an idea of what I think of the world, what happened in this time period in the world. Yes. Instead of like trying to read books and like take what take what I'm giving, like no, I have to reach deeper than that. Yes. Something more profound than what everyone else is saying. I have to see what everyone else is saying. And make my own conclusion and turn it into film. Yes, he well, did the same thing with Wall Street. I and need, platoon. Yes, I need that that bend. Even though it's going to be "quote unquote" anti-historical, at least I'm I'm seeing a perspective. I'm seeing yeah. a, a blat a blatant perspective, very blatant. So you can I can see where the filmmakers gone with what they're like what they're trying to say with. With the the Plato, which is these historical events, they're Plato to manipulate around to send your message across. I'll take that and like hundred times. Yeah, and if you like just suppose like just like as an example, you just suppose what what Oliver Stone did with Kevin Costner's character and compare it to um yeah Cillian Murphy. It's not that's where it's the biggest dis, um disparity is at. It's like um. You're trying to carry it through through on this character's shoulders, and it's like it's like the world is moving like without him. Where like Kevin Costner is like the epicenter yes. of the of that world. Yes, he's making he's making the story move, and the story's not moving him. He's moving the story. Yeah, very well said, very fucking well said right there. I I do I agree with that a hundred percent. 
it, it, and as like like I say, like the the even the things that were if no one's trying to go right by the book historical, he still fuck shit up. So it ends up becoming make believe anyway. Yeah. So it's like So it's like, yeah, you're not even like you weren't even successful at 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 like the 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 low the the low um, um hanging fruit you mm-hmm. fucking know. Yeah. You you dang yeah. like it's like not once again, not a bad movie, but I want I wanted more because he's probably my favorite director, if not one of. And it's like I these they're started they're like, I want this and he didn't really for me deliver it. But I'm sure people will hate on you know, a lowering a grade of anything Nolan does because like I don't there's no dick riding over here, but yeah. There are dick riding no, yeah. out there. <laughs> So, and they will dick right we ain't getting invites yeah, we ain't getting invited to no screening there's no need to do all that oh, I, I would hope a guy like if no one heard what I just what I just said and what you just said I would yeah. hope he'd appreciate it that's what I would hope for nah yeah definitely because it wasn't insulting it was like he's a terrible creator like nah it's just you know I think there's a there could have been a better version of this a la even like a JFK or all right, here we go. But obviously Oppenheimer is going to be on his list. Oppenheimer. I feel like I... the feeling was unanimous, right? That just sounds like why we go to movies. Turns out when you watch the movie, it is in and of itself a celebration of cinema. The script has flipped. It used to be this movie has so many CGI shots. That's how great it is. Now it's this movie has no CGI shots. Even the explosions practical. That's like Oppenheimer is Christopher Nolan. Say that again. So oh, it's like he's his, his um. He's like oh like there's a there was this norm that had been created, and no Nolan did the counter of the norm, <laughs> as in like that's if like that's like um a, a groundbreaking thing to do. Yeah. Well, I mean it kind of like. But no one's been doing this for a long time. Like the, with the Batman movies, with Inception, uh, he no, but okay, yes, but I mean, What I mean to say is like, um, it's like you expect that you like that's like a given. It's not. That's not the calling card of the movie. All right, true. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, when you got nothing else to point at, that becomes <laughs> the hallmark of like what. Yeah. You call you're basing the fucking um the movie like oh like, yeah he did. He, um, cause that was fucking dope, bro. Like, um, when this guy closes his eyes, the, uh, Oppenheimer closes his eyes and he imagines the atom splitting. Yeah. Like, all that shit, I'm like, oh, this shit's beautiful. Yes. And I'm like, um, and even the atomic bomb, like, all oh, that shit, all the technical shit, that was, um, I was like, yeah, that's what, that's what makes, that's kind of, like, yeah, that makes a movie, like, above competent. Or, like, the subject matter is taken seriously. It's not, uh, most directors would just glaze over it. Not in the but you would never expect that from no one. Yeah. And That's like, he like he then he's doing the bare minimum and like it's like, oh look at his brilliance. It's like, nah, bro, like there's <laughs> there's levels to what this guy has accomplished. Yes. The 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 practical effects and all that shit are just yeah, supposed yeah, to be that's like I'm already yeah, that's already baked into like <laughs> the the meat the normal meat the meme. Yeah. That's not it's not putting over the top for me. It, it's just supposed to be the little powdered sugar on top or the cherry yeah. on top or whatever. It's not supposed to be the fucking meal itself. Not the main course, yeah. All right. CGI shots. That's how great it is. Now it's this movie has no CGI shots. Even the explosions practical. That's how great it is. Oppenheimer oh, is Christopher Nolan also being a seasoned filmmaker. But Go out there and hear, start hearing other opinions, Jeremy Johns. I beg you to. As large as you possibly can, and as grand. Get a real as vibe as of what's Tony happening Murphy in cinema. Trusted. The cast was enormous and vast. Robert Downey Jr. and Oppenheimer was kind of like Robert De Niro in Killers of the Flower Moon, where it's like you don't have to put in this much work. We know what you can do. You could have just phoned it in for a paycheck, but you didn't. This is probably. But his character technical- sucked ass. Like the the villain twist at the end was fucking terrible. To yeah, that was, that was terrible, bro. I really didn't like that part. Even it was, it's just it was like, it was like this is beneath. This is beneath the kind of storytelling you've given. Yeah, even if it's "quote unquote" historical, why are you do? Why are you treating it like it's a villain twist at the end? Like, don't do that. Like, if he's an asshole, 
like showcase that you think he's an asshole from the beginning. You don't need to fucking woo me with a twist twist villain arc at the end. Like I don't need that. But as it is. By the way, if Oppenheimer's here, I better see Barbie <laughs> somewhere in the top two for this guy. Because Barbie's a better well, movie, in my isn't opinion. This, isn't this the second one? This, this is number three. This is number oh, three. okay. All right, here we go. Go level, the best movie on this list, but there are other movies that just speak to me personally, and those remain number two. All right, we've come to the top two. I'm not going to lie. I've gone back. No, we were the that thing. He didn't like Barbie. Swapped them around so many times. Jeremy Johnson liked Barbie. In reality. He said Barbie was not made for him. The top four. They've shuffled all around so much. Really? We'll see how it yeah, lands in the final made. product of this video. Uh, I saw that Stands video. Right but... now, number two, Godzilla minus one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, bro. <laughs> Now you're low key insulting Christopher Nolan. Now, now you're low key yeah, insulting. Yeah. Like, oh wow, Nolan's practical effects. All right, here's a CGI mess called Godzilla minus one. <laughs> it's wrecking. Oh fuck, he just wrecked me with that one. Yeah, bro. Godzilla minus one. Now I haven't seen it all the way through. We just watched like ten minutes. How far? I don't know. Like probably 10, 15 minutes. Or some shit. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Considering... Like, you can't tell me the story is better than Oppenheimer's. There's no there's no way that Godzilla minus one story... Like, some of the dialogue I was saying were, like, simple, simple sentences. Maybe for the audience, so they don't have to give them complicated fucking subtitles. You just say, like, Oh, no, Godzilla's here. <laughs> Godzilla is really bad. Like you give him like simple sentences like that. Like I, I, I need to hear his reasons for this. Like if it's straight up all about action, like just a good action movie. It's like holy fuck. It stands right now number two, Godzilla minus one. For longtime Godzilla fans, this is probably number one. And you would be right to say so. But for me, I expected nothing out of Godzilla Minus One. Godzilla never gripped me. It's just one of those things I missed out on growing up. Then the Americanized Godzilla, Godzilla Kong movies, they've come yeah. out and I'm like, okay, well, they happen. And then I watched this and I was like, wow. So this is what Godzilla is supposed to be. I always saw the old Japanese Godzilla movies as cheese. Oh, is he supposed this to took be? all of the cheese out and just made something grand and epic. Humans you actually care about. I don't know what that means. Struggles that grip you. Also a monster that threatens their lives and ability to rebuild. Another thing I loved about it, it was the people that came together to take out Godzilla. It was on the people to save Spoilers. Themselves. How could you not love that underdog story? Yeah, I was impressed. Yeah, I've seen 20 million Spielberg fucking movies already, bro. Like, <laughs> do we need more? Like, come on. Is that really that compelling? A popcorn film. That's all you gave us. It's like there's one slot left, right? There's number one pick. And where I, when I interrupted you while you were naming a couple movies like, that are already better than this, like everything on his list already. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's this wreckage. Like, number one. What the fuck could number one be? Uh, it better be one of those. <laughs> Watch should be a, like an anime short or something. So this is the first movie that made me feel like I missed out in not being a Godzilla fan earlier in my life, but how I, could that be? An absolute for my own movie uh, selfish reasons. Oh, I want it to be a movie we haven't seen, just so I can watch it. After and this. number one, objectively speaking, is probably not better than the previous three that I listed. What? I what? really love me a good ending to a story. To John Wick Chapter 4. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 I forgot this movie even came out this year. Oh, oh fuck. John Wick Chapter 4. <laughs> what is happening? What did you... What is you two doing? Who, is, who manipulated this man? How did he get here? How is this dude a famous movie reviewer? How'd this happen? Who let that happen? John Wick. You put John Wick number four over Oppenheimer. You crazy fuck, bro. <laughs> You're crazy. The fucking 
epic technical shit in Oppenheimer. <laughs> you put John Wick four over it. You're crazy. <laughs> That's insanity. And you put Godzilla above that above Oppenheimer as well, bro. Like this is no man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, somehow, we've seen most of the movies on his list, and these other movies that he hasn't had time to see. Somehow, like somehow, we got to see all of them. Yeah, but the the guy who gets paid to be a movie reviewer couldn't get to these movies somehow. You didn't see yeah all these other fucking movies. Listen, Jeremy Jeremy Johns fans, I need you guys to start a petition to get him to my Discord so we can actually see more movies. And hear Yo, more did opinions. he really need to put that fucking Michael Fox movie in there, bro? I, <laughs> well, he put a he put a movie that's from the fucking eighties, bro. It's his number oh, yeah, ten. Yeah. <laughs> that's even worse. Yeah, that's even worse. And and fo- he follows it up with a documentary. It's like you didn't see any other movies. I saw the Abyss, bro. Um, I've seen. I think I've seen parts of it. It's like. It's okay. So what? Uh, so let me let me guess. If they in all in 2023, if they re-released just for like shits and giggles, Star Wars, Ghostbusters, uh, Indiana, the original Indiana Jones, uh, Inception, The Dark Knight, like all just re-released them in the theaters randomly. You would have named them all. Yeah. Would all these old movies be your top ten? Like, Sounds like <laughs> that's the logic he's telling me. So, yo, I feel bad for his fans that are watching this. Like, oh, oh fuck. You just leave it empty handed and shit. Freak my life, bro. That's actually that's actually incredible. You almost wonder, like, how many fans, like, this, probably, this guy probably goes to Comic Con. And he's like, he's like, looked all, he's like, oh, like, motherfucker, like, oh, yeah, whatever. There'll always be a contingency of like people. They're just gonna dick ride because you're uh, you're a name or whatever. But like, yeah, like Chris Stuckman will pull up or Nerd Roddick will pull. Up, they'll fucking run you out the building. <laughs> Nerd Roddick just has to use the culture war shit. He's gonna run this fool out of the building. He's right? gonna run, yeah, all these guys out the building. And Jeremy John's obviously not political at all. He's no, nah, right? he's, 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 he's kind of a blank slate looking motherfucker. So your dry cost would be like, this guy's a coward. He won't even say anything about putting putting all the gays in our movies. <laughs> it'll scare this it'll scare the fan base like, yeah, he's right. And I'll jump ship, bro. Just cause these neutral humans leave room for shit like that. Two million fucking followers. Uh, let me ask you a question, Anthony. Was was John Wick four anywhere in your mind during this top ten list? I didn't even see John Wick Four, bro. <laughs> okay, all right. You didn't. See, that's okay. You I didn't see it, so it doesn't count. I didn't see. I haven't. See, I saw like the second one, random. I saw. Really John, I saw John Wick Four, and it's like, oh, this is a John Wick movie. Well, we'll see you in John Wick Five. We'll see you next time. It's like one of the. It's the fourth one, bro. It isn't some special, like unique thing where it's like this is got it. This is essentially like picking Fast and Furious fucking movies in your top ten movies of the year. Yeah, it's essentially that. Holy God, Jeremy Johns, bro! I mean, like, what'd you say? You said poor things, right? Better than yeah, every movie on this May, list, including May Oppenheimer. December. Uh, well, I think the Barbie movie is better than every movie on this list, including Barbie's Oppenheimer. Better. I'm not. I'm not counting the abyss. I'm not. I'm not counting the abyss. I'm not counting a documentary. I'm talking about just movies. Uh, dream scenario. Dream scenario. Better than the entire list, in my opinion. I, I need to rewatch it. That and Oppenheimer. I, I think Dream Scenario is better than Oppenheimer, for what I look for in film. It's not. It's not the technical, you know, mastery of Nolan, but I think the story. I enjoyed the story more than boring ass historical references. Oppenheimer. <laughs> straight up it's like my god bro it was, that's three movies right there that are already there's probably more where's my fucking mouse huh let me see yeah, lady baller no I'm joking <laughs> Aquaman no, no. 
Just trolling. Poor things. May December, bro. With Natalie Portman May and Julianne December, Moore. December. Oh, oh my God. I, I didn't. I it was May December. Oh, I thought you just said it was made in December or something. Yo, oh, or that's what I said. December. My bad. No, I meant made. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I meant though. May December is epically good. It's super duper good. That's a super duper legit movie, man. In my opinion, that's a really good movie. It's better than the entire list. Yo, I feel so bad, bro. My 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 coworkers like, yo, I saw the main in the summer. He thought it was stupid, and guess guess what? He thinks that movie's stupid, but he said the Julia Roberts movie was good. Leave the world behind. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm like, I gotta get you in this Discord, bro. I gotta <laughs> find a way, bro. I gotta find a way, bro. Get you in this Discord. Yeah, you can uh, leave that movie behind if you want. Just let that shit. <laughs> nah, I... oh, that movie was political dribble, fucking drooling baby garbage bullshit, bro. That's what I think. I think it's a politicize out the ass garbage man that's in that movie but it is what it is like Obama fucking producer yeah, yeah. what are you far yes. right far right yeah, yeah bro that's good but uh yes. yeah did he do a list Stockman no I'm looking at uh I'm looking at uh <laughs> the money he raised for his film bro <laughs> Shit is crazy. I mean, good for him. But shit is crazy. Someone helped Chris Stuckman raise money to pay Jeremy Johns to get him in this Discord. Yeah. Someone pay him to be in this Discord and watch some real shit and hear some no, real. Bring opinions. him too. Bring him too. Nah, Stuckman's got. He's got. <laughs> Stuckman's got to pony up his own cash for that. He's got to pay to get in there. He's got to pony it. He got to pay us to get in there. Half a mil of head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let this video finish. My God. You can make a new original IP. I wonder if we'll have honorable mentions. If there's like something be way better than what he's saying. Classic. The action sequence. Yeah, we watched the Iron Claw, right? Out of control. Yeah, the thing I have loved <laughs> that we gotta John see. Wick movies. Oh, I want to see that. I was already looking forward to seeing it. It hasn't felt like copy and paste. You can but my so guess, it's gonna be emotional dribble. <laughs> Not give me the payoffs that the wrestler gave me. Fresh, it feels different than the previous ones. There's that top down scene, like I said in my review, it reminded me of Hotline Miami. In a world where action movies are a dime a dozen, John Wick came along and just it gave me something that felt new. John Wick Chapter Four <laughs> kept that God, torch. God. It's not just action. It's action. It's fucking taken, bro. It's, it's taken. Stylish, it's classy, <laughs> slick suits, cool weaponry. And again, I cool weapons and slick suits. Has the guts to lose it. So many stories just keep going until they fizzle into obscurity. They limp along until no one cares anymore and it just becomes sad. John Wick Chapter 4, I felt, was a great ending to John Wick's story. I've heard rumors about a five. Oh wait, that's the I last don't movie. See how you do a chapter five without ruining John Wick chapter four? So don't do that. It is nearly three. <laughs> yeah, hours yeah, they listen to you when they make just make movie decisions. What can I say? It Forget left it. me fulfilled, which is why John Wick chapter four. <clears throat> that's number one. In well, Jeremy Johns, you asked this question. Like, hey, don't make another John Wick. Leave this. Let this be the ending. Here's the reason why these studio heads won't even don't even know your fucking opinions on these things, bro. They won't give a shit, bro. Because you hold no fucking weight, bro. You give nope. these, you give milk, milk toast fucking commentary on film, and thus, it's kind of, eh, hey, you know, maybe, maybe it's for you, maybe it's not. I don't know. Instead of like saying what you, like, what you really think, like, yo, this movie sucks ass, bro. This movie sucked. Let it be known, man. Let it be known, so your audience don't think you're just some pushover, fucking pussy ass, fucking YouTuber, bro. Whatever. 2023 for me so that concludes my list of my top 10 favorite movies of 2023 thank you all for watching this video and thank you all once again for yet another Never year of enough. me doing this i've said it before and i'll say it again it's 100 true without you watching you need me, to thank your no patrons and tell, tell them what t-shirt you want them to buy year, 2024 july 2024 you ready for it it'll be 15 years of me talking 15 to years that's a bafflingly long time to 15 years what's that so it's what three two 
2008. So he's like at the beginnings of YouTube, like I said. He's he's grandfathered in, bro. <laughs> he, he is. He can never. She can never get better at it and make more money than ever. Yeah. He's gonna have to like get canceled. He's gonna have to say, uh, I don't know. I don't know. He's gonna have to get caught like grabbing some girl's ass or something, and then he's gonna have to fix <laughs> that hairline, bro. I know that. He's gonna have to say he's sympathetic to Adolf Hitler or something, <laughs> and then <laughs> his views will shoot back out. He can make more money. There you go. But let's be honest, he's too scared to do some shit like that. I thought that's a good thing. I'm just saying. He finds a barber that knows know what he's doing. He's getting canceled, bro. Watch. <laughs> Dude, get that shit lined up. Holy shit, man. Think about it, especially when you're talking about YouTube life for a channel. Like, I get it. Me, my Like, dad, you're only here because you're in, at the everybody. beginning. Yeah. So I'm glad I continue to work for people who do like my stuff. I'm very conscious of that and very thankful for that. So we'll I doubt you're conscious of that. You. All right, so your top 10 favorite movies of 2023 or five or three, however many you want to list. Or maybe you just have- Put them in the comment section. Whatever it is, whatever Let's find out if you read some. Think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you see here, you want to see more. Click right here to see more. Let's, let's look and see if he- Angry Joe, I like Angry, I like Angry Joe way more than this guy. I like oh. Jody and Angry Joe. I agree. Wow, is he reading through these comments? That's crazy. He looked all all not unacknowledged from uh, his channel, though. So did he read through has the comments? He, has he acknowledged one of them? <laughs> of course. Jeremy Johns, have you uh, gone through your own uh, channel? You said, "Hey, leave your top five list." Did you Did you go through them? I don't see your. Uh, your little heart mark, your little like, and your your heart thing. I, I don't see that anywhere. Maybe you just forgot to do it. You just you read through them, like you know, on his free time. I'm sure. I'm sure that's what happened. Like he didn't. He definitely, definitely, obviously went through a bunch of his comments and uh, you know took their opinions into account. <laughs> he totally did that. Because he has time for that, but not for more movies. He has time for this, for yeah. that. Though. All right, there's uh, reviewing the reviewers. Jeremy John's top ten list was ass cheeks. Let's be honest about it; it was bad. It's it's worse than I expected. It's much worse than I expected. I was expecting at least at least one movie where it's like I never even heard of this thing, and it's like, oh, fucking Jeremy John's went out his way to see it, and he thinks it's one of the best movies of the year, but no one saw it before. So like, you know, like, nah, it wasn't that. These are all Netflix or major motion pictures and shit like that, except for the documentary and a re-released old fucking movie that everyone's probably seen already before. I was like, that's incredible. He did that. That's that one's another insult, a quiet insult. That Jeremy Johns does right there. <laughs> Insults all the newer movies and newer creators by putting the abyss in James Cameron <laughs> in, his, in his fucking top 10 list, bro. Like, shit, bro. It is what it is. Uh, any uh, last thoughts, Anthony? Um... Nah, I'm good, bro. <laughs> kind of speechless. Exactly how I feel. There it is, YouTube.